It's so nice to virtually meet everyone. I am Michelle and Mary is with me today and we're doing our social media campaign um, webinar. So it was so great that um, so many of you made comments on what you were hoping to get out of the webinars uh, these last two weeks and some of them were about social media um, and the overall theme was kind of um, you want to have a plan. You don't want to just be posting willy-nilly, like they always used to say, you know, you're posting what you ate on Twitter. Um, you really wanted more of a cohesive plan, and that's exactly what we're going to do today, is to show you how to come up with that long-term plan, and then how to measure it to make sure it's achieving both your social media goals and your business goals. So... Uh, we are Mountain Mojo Group, and Mary and I are actually both pretty new to Mountain Mojo Group. Um, I've been with them since the very beginning of February, and she's been with us for a little over a month. Um, and both of us are new to Flagstaff also, so I know we can't wait to um, really get out into restaurants and do all the things that you get to do when coronavirus wasn't happening because we have we both have a lot to explore and learn about our new town. Oops. Uh, okay, so a little bit more about me and Mary. Um, I am a digital marketing specialist. I'm Mojo's social media manager. I love branding. I'm a graphic designer. I make logos. Um, I love making presentations like this one. I'm a runner and a mountain biker, and I love my dog, Lola. Um, and Mary, do you want to say a little bit about you? Sure. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is Mary, and I am a project manager with Mountain Mojo Group. Also, I uh, am a digital marketing specialist, and I absolutely love creating content for uh, clients as well as I really love Instagram and Facebook. That's where I love to spend the most of my time, and I love listening to podcasts. I am also a runner like Michelle, and that actually explains my face. <laughs> I uh, crashed on a trail run this past weekend and I ended up getting stitches. So I don't normally look like this, but uh, I'm okay. <laughs> and I will be back out there as soon as my face heals. And um, I also have a, a dog, Max. So very nice to meet you all. And we're excited to dive deep today with you in social media. We are, we're so excited. So this is um, what we're gonna cover in this workshop. And if you have your workbook with you, either on your screen or printed out, um, it follows along perfectly with this. And this is actually the exact same um, presentation that I do when I teach the four hour class. The only difference with the time is we just don't have that time together to really go through the workbook and really take the time to answer all the questions. Um, so I just really want to encourage you to do that on your own. It definitely takes a lot of thought and sometimes it's really hard to get into that mental space, um, but that's really what will separate you from having a good social media campaign plan and then otherwise just posting when you think of random things. So filling out that workbook is gonna be key to the second step of this presentation. So we're gonna start with defining your social media campaign goals. Then we're gonna do a little bit of research, you versus your competitors and what that looks like, what are they doing, what works for them, what doesn't. Um, and then we're gonna jump right into building your social media campaign. And there's a couple different chunks for each of this. We'll define your objective, your audience, that's gonna be a really big part of this, your message, the actual content that you're producing, your placements, meaning where are you posting? Are you posting on Facebook? Are you posting on Instagram? Are you just doing Instagram stories? Are you doing LinkedIn? Uh, whatever works best for your business. And then metrics, how do we know if this is working? Are we achieving our goals based on that? How can we figure that out? Okay, so successful campaign qualities. This is what a good campaign has. It has thoughtful research. And that's kind of what I mean when I say it really takes a lot of thought and planning at the beginning to make sure that you're producing on social media exactly what it is 
to achieve both your social media goals and your business goals. So that goes in with clear goals, um, that you have an engaging message, that you're not just talking to your audience, but that you're engaging with them and that your audience is specific. You know exactly who it is you're talking to. Um, the content that you're producing, that it's of high quality, both pictures and the messaging. Your strategic placements, again, where you're posting that quality content and then analyzing it. So all campaigns have those things. So just to kind of sum it up, by the end of today, you will have identified your social media objectives, researched the market, and created your unique campaign. Complete with who is your audience. We're going to spend quite a bit of time on that. Where your audience is, what your content looks and feels like, where and how to promote your content, and then how to measure it. It's basically what I spend every single day doing. <laughs> okay, we've got our first poll question. So is your business currently active on Facebook, Instagram, or both equally? And Megan's gonna pop that poll up for you guys to fill out. And I did, um, I made this a multiple choice option because just in case if somebody is using additional social media platforms. Um, That's great, thank you. So we're just gonna give you guys a little bit of time to fill that out and then we'll see what your answers are. We can kind of use that information going forward with our presentation. We'll give, we'll give everyone maybe another five or so seconds. All right, I'll go ahead and share that with everyone. Oh, cool. Both Facebook and Instagram equally is the winner. And no one is not on. So that's great. That was really helpful. Thank you guys for filling that out. Okay, so first we're going to talk about our goals. We've got another poll question coming at you fast. How many followers do you have on Facebook or Instagram? Um, since you guys said you use both equally, if you could think of it as use the one that has the most, that's the number I would like to see. So we've got less than 100, 100 to 1,000, more than a thousand, you're not sure, or you don't use social media for your business. Got a pretty diverse response group right now. Oh, wow, that's everyone. 100% participation. Nice. A hundred to a thousand. Okay, cool. More than a thousand, 32%. That's quite a few of you, that's awesome. Okay, great. Okay, so the first thing you wanna think about, and this is actually the very first question in your workbook, is what are your larger business goals? And we're not gonna take time today to fill out your whole workbook, but I do wanna start with this question, um, and I would like to take two minutes for you to really think about this one. Okay, just making sure I'm not jumping ahead of myself. So um, on your workbook or just on your notepad on your computer, I just want to take two minutes and I really want you to think about what are your larger business goals. Is it to grow your business? Is it to um, increase your local brand awareness, the people in Flagstaff, you want more people in Flagstaff to know about you. Um, do you have an online company and you want it to be more national people know about you? What, what are your larger business goals? To me, 
you know, unless you've like really sat down and done this, sometimes this is hard because you're not making them super specific. They might be really, really, really big. Um, so using now our social media goals to help those business goals will really help define you. So I've got some examples to show you. So if our business goal is to grow the brand locally, then how my social goal helps that is with brand awareness. I want more people in Flagstaff to know about my brand. So in order to help my business goal when I'm creating my social content, I'm always going to be thinking about that. Or if I create an ad, I'm going to choose for more people in Flagstaff to, um, to be seen my content for my content to be seen. <laughs> okay, here's another example. If my business goal is to turn my audience into brand advocates, then for my social goal, how my social goal would help that is with engagement. So kind of like I mentioned before, I don't wanna just talk to my audience. I really wanna engage with them. I want them to feel as if they are along for the ride in my business. That will really turn them into brand advocates for me. So how will we know if we succeed? Why are we even doing this in the first place? So this goes back to that first one, business goal, grow the brand locally. My social goal that helps that is awareness. So what I'm gonna look at to measure are the number of followers I have, are people sharing my content, reach, that means how many people is my post, my content getting out to, and impressions, how many people are seeing it on there. Uh, timeline as well. The other one, turn audience into advocates. My social goal that helps that is engagement, meaning comments, shares, um, replies. So that's what I'm going to measure. My comments, my likes or hearts on the page. You know, on Facebook, you can choose to like it or to heart it or to wow or to cry. And actually, the more people that choose different of those, um, the better engagement that is for your post. Your numbers will be higher. Okay, so we kind of already did this. Two business goals for 2020. This might have changed drastically uh, from January. And then social goals for each business. And again, both these questions are on your workbook. Um, so it would be awesome when you have time, maybe this weekend, um, to go and really think about those things. And then how will you measure your goals? And I've got a list of examples, kind of the things we just talked about. So on Facebook, I might choose comments and page likes. Those are the two things that I'm going to look at the most. Are more people liking my page and are more people commenting on my post, meaning that I created an engaging enough post that it propelled them to want to comment on it. Um, and I'm going to do something a little different for Facebook and Instagram. Your audience is probably different on Facebook and Instagram. So for Instagram, it might be followers um, similar to Facebook, but then maybe saves. Is the content that you're creating, does it teach something? Is it with them long enough that they think, oh, you know what, I'm going to want to look at that later? I just wanted to jump in real quick. I don't know if people know how to see that on their Instagram, the saves, because you can see the comments, you can see the likes, but it's actually, it looks like a little kind of flag next to it. So you can actually see if someone saved your post. And that's what Michelle's talking about when she says saves. It means someone thought, oh, I want to look back at this. It's something valuable, good information. So I just wanted to make sure everyone knows what we mean by saves. Yeah, that's great. Like Mary, for example, always posts really good smoothie recipes. And so I will save her smoothie recipe so I can go back and look at it later. Okay, the next chunk is research. Another poll question. Is your main competition a fellow small business or is it a large corporation? So we've got local, small business, corporation, both, neither, I'm not sure. Got about five more seconds.
Oh, neither. That's interesting. Okay, great. So the next part of this talks about um, if you do have a competitor, or maybe it's not even a direct competitor, but maybe it's a company that you admire, um, and they might have a different audience than you, they might have a different product than you, but you really admire what they do on social, um, and you would like to create something similar, all of this would be really helpful thinking about them as well. It wouldn't need to be a direct competitor. So you would want to look at what platforms they, they're using. Are they on Facebook? Are they on Instagram? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Snapchat? TikTok? What, what are they using these days? Is it what you're using? Um, how does your profile look compared to others? For example, a construction company might prioritize Google My Business and Facebook. Whereas total op opposite side of the spectrum, a wedding photographer would prioritize Pinterest and Instagram. How often do they post? Again, this doesn't have to be your direct competitor. You can be looking at someone you admire as well. What time do they post? How often do they post? And are their posts different across platforms? Meaning, is your audience so different on Facebook and Instagram? I know for all of my Mojo clients, it is. So I try to create different content on Facebook and Instagram to make sure that I'm always keeping those audiences in mind when I'm creating my content. You don't want to just post the same post on all of your platforms. People get annoyed with that. <laughs> What types of content do they post? This can help you find other opportunities to diversify your brand's comment, content. So different types of content, some things that they might be doing, um, updates on their business, especially right now that's happening all the time, different sales and promotions. They might be real salesy or maybe they really balance out their sales posts with other content. Um, team highlights. For me, for all of my clients, this is always, always the content that does the best every month is team highlights. People love, love, love learning about who you are and who your team is. Um, history of the company. Holiday posts, not just sale posts, but just holiday fun facts, um, flash sales, random updates, industry related articles. Um, national days like yesterday was National Dog Rescue Day. Uh, theme posts like um, for a hardware store, it might be um, backyard, um, get outside kind of thing. So that would be your theme. Behind the scenes, people love behind the scenes. Product photography, testimonials, and then personal posts like your pet. And then you could also look at what are their top metrics, meaning what do they perform the best at? Are they the best at getting comments? Are they the best? Do they have a ton of page likes? Maybe they don't have a ton of followers, but all of their followers are super, super engaged. Tip, if an industry leader only gets 10 comments on a social post, don't set your goals to get 100 comments just yet. However, this doesn't mean you can't get more engagement than some of the bigger businesses. And I have found this to be true so, so much. People love local companies. They love supporting local brands. So if you get them on your side, you can have way more engagement than a big chain. If you're a small burrito place compared to Chipotle, that kind of thing. Mary, do you have anything you'd like to add about that? No, I think you pretty much covered it. Okay, great. Okay, now we're into my objective. So this is something also like at the beginning and really defining your goals, thinking about your objective statement. Uh, and I've got an example, one for Mojo. So as simply as you can write it, what are you to, trying to achieve with your next social media campaign? So I said expand business, so there's a goal right there, in Flagstaff, Arizona by generating five new small business leads per month. So I got really, really specific with that, both in quantity and timeline, through sharing consistent 
thoughtful content in establishing Mountain Mojo Group as a thought leader of small business marketing. So you do want to make sure you take the time to establish your objective and goals, and you want to make sure each piece of content has a purpose. Don't post content that doesn't have an objective, and don't go back and forth on your goals from post to post. You really, really want to stay focused. I just had a uh, mastermind meeting last week with other social media managers and we really kind of talked about how it's almost being like being a life coach um, and it's because sometimes it's really hard to sit down and really take the time to make all these plans and to really dig deep on what your goals are but that is key 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 to having a successful social media campaign and just to add to that that's why we want you to think about what your business goals are first because that controls your content and you want to stick with consistency, staying on brand, delivering that clear message to your followers, uh, to prospective uh, clients of yours. So that's why as Michelle had us start with the business goals, like that's the priority. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now we're getting into your audience. This is my favorite part. I love doing this. If you uh, were in the very first webinar with Rand and Austin, um, they talked a lot about this too. And we're gonna actually get into a little bit more detail about creating your audience. Okay, we've got another poll question. Have you ever created a user persona for your business? Oh, I just saw that Mike had uh, found out about, how do you find out about mastermind social media meetings? Um, and that was something that someone in Mojo put together um, from his, I think his LinkedIn connections and he invited me to. So I think it was just personal connections that he made on LinkedIn to answer your question, Mike. All right, your choices for user personas are yes, you have done it. No, but I've heard of it. No, I've never heard of it. I'm not sure what the heck you're talking about. Okay, great, pretty even across. I think you guys will really get a lot out of this. So who are my current customers? And this is another page in your workbook. Whoa. Okay, so we're actually gonna come back to this exact same slide after we dig into what all these little boxes are, but I just wanted you to see what we do first. So at Mountain Mojo Group, we make three or four of these for every client that we do strategy with so that every single time we're creating something, whether it's social or the website or anything, we are always, always keeping these things in mind. I keep a big binder on my desk so that I'm always looking at them so I never forget who I'm making the content for. So you don't want to say that everyone is your audience. Funny enough, people say that all the time. You want to get really specific. Describe only your ideal customer for this exercise. So you want to think of their age. You want to think of their gender, their occupation. Are they married? Are they single? Do they have kids? How much money do they make? What kind of car do they drive? What are their habits? Are they runners? Do they get up early? Um, are they night owls? So many things that we want to really get specific about. Where do they consume their media? Where do they get their news? Do they watch cable TV or do they only stream on Hulu? Do they hear ads on Spotify or do they hear them on the radio? Do they get the newspaper or subscribe online to a newspaper? Do they follow online, online news outlets or do they get all their news from Twitter? What brands do they prefer? So you wanna consider what brands they currently interact with and why they interact with those brands. Do they like Apple or Microsoft? That's the really common one. Tesla or Jeep? 
Do they get Stitch Fix or do they go to Dillard's? Do they like Target or Walmart? All those things. What factors do they consider when making a purchase or supporting a brand? Does it solve a problem for them? Is it high quality? Is that what they're looking for? Is price the most important thing for them? Is it convenient? Does when they purchase, um, for example, for like HomeCo, HomeCo does a lot of charity work. Is that really important to them? Could that be why they choose to shop someplace? Um, is it gonna improve their life? Is status really important to them? Is that why they would choose to get a Tesla? Um, sustainable practices. I think that's really, really more important for consumers these days. Um, the aesthetic of the product or service and or does it have a variety of options? So what what are they really looking for when they make that purchasing decision? And how familiar are they with you right now? Where are they currently in the buyer's journey? Are they aware of you? Or are they aware of you and now they're in the point where they're considering whether or not they would like to do business with you? Or have they passed both of those phases and they're on to decision? They've decided, yes, they're gonna do business. Or have they already gone through all those three things and now they're in this final step where they're your brand champion, they talk to you, they talk about you to all their friends, they definitely, the you're the business that they recommend. That's obviously our goal is to get everyone to that point, but you want to really think about where they are in that buyer's journey. And then typical day, put yourself in their shoes. When do they get to work? When do they get home? And you guys might be thinking, this is crazy. You really think about this for everyone? Yes. The answer is yes. We think about all these questions and we write it down and we go back and forth to really, really get to the nitty gritty of who our customer is. Where do they have lunch? Do they do things in the evenings? What errands do they run on the weekends? Are there weekends Saturday, Sunday, or are there weekends Tuesday, Wednesday? So then you wanna take all of this information and you wanna get a stock photo to go with it. You can use Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. They have free photos and you can find um, a ton of stuff on there where it will help you um, now you see this person instead of just having words to go along with it. So then we get back to our persona right here. Gotta move my... Clicky Claire, no, Clicky Carrie. <laughs> She's based in Scottsdale. Carrie loves taking day trips throughout Arizona with her boyfriend slash fiance and close friends. Well, if it was my fiance, I definitely would have just said fiance. You're so excited once you get past boyfriend. <laughs> Sidebar. While she may have one or two things planned each day trip, hiking, shopping, or visiting a friend for dinner, she likes making plans on the fly. So that's super important about our customer. She relies a lot on her smartphone for looking up restaurants, bars, hikes, through uh, apps like Yelp, Google Maps, and All Trails. Carrie enjoys activities that are group inclusive for couples and adventurous. She's currently on the hunt for something spontaneous to add to her day trip to the Verde Valley. So that's a ton of information, but it gives us such a good idea of who she is. Then we look at her media preferences, the different things that she likes, and her brand preferences. Lulu, REI, Apple, Fitbit, Bevmo. Um, I think the fact that she uses Yelp and Google Maps is really important. She does still get a magazine. That's really important. And she's mostly on Instagram and Pinterest. So then we find out where she is in her um, her journey with the brand and she's at that very first level, just awareness. So our goal is to get her all the way to the blue part at the end advocacy. She's 24 to 35, a nurse practitioner, a retail manager, and she's engaged. And look, she's so excited. 
Um, and she's pretty familiar with technology and feels comfortable with all of that. She looks very excited. So for every client that we work with, we will have about three of these and they'll all be different um, depending on our, our audience. So that was a really big chunk um, and we, in the longer, uh, not webinars, but classes, we spend a lot of time really thinking about that for each of your businesses. Um, I'm just going to take a break real quick before we get into the messaging of your social content and see if I can answer any questions. Let's see, when creating an e-commerce site, is it important to compress the photos? What about videos? Oh. It just disappeared. Oh, is that because it was answered? <laughs> it must have been. Yes, I did answer it. I wanted okay. it to show up there for everyone. I don't know why it disappeared, but um, that was obviously a question more geared towards building a website, which obviously we're happy to answer, uh, not specifically towards social media. I did refer that person to uh, bulkresizephotos.com, which is a great resource for resizing photos for websites, blogs, things like that. That's great. Yeah, I think the answer is definitely yes. And I, if I can cut in super quick, just so you guys know, um, when you go to the uh, under the Q&A box, there's actually a tab at the top that says answered. And when you click on that, it'll show you um, the question that was just answered. And if you type the answer, um, you can actually, um, and this is for participants too, you can click on the little um, arrow at the bottom and it actually shows Mary's response. So um, that way, if you type the answer, all of our participants can still see that. Great, thank you, Megan. Yes, thank you. We did have another question come through about how do we compile the demographics for our, our personas? Michelle, do you wanna answer that? Sure, yeah, that's a great question, Mike. Um, we use Google, um, and so there's a lot of websites out there where you can just straight up Google um, demographics um, in, in your area and look through that and kind of find exactly what you're looking for to get more specific. A lot of times, um, for example, I just did one for a client, and as I was creating it, I thought, this is my dad, like my dad is, his ideal persona. So I had a really good understanding. Um, but then I still went back and used Google and compiled that data. I'm um, just researching different um, demographic websites and to make sure that I was on point with that. And just to add to that, part of our job is to do market research for our clients. And when we're hired to do a social media campaign, we do very thorough market research. We put together a report showing the client, you know, not only these personas, but all this demographic information uh, geographically, if, you know, they're selling locally or if it's like countrywide, you know, it's targeted and specific to each individual client. So that's how we get the demographic information and why. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so now we're on to the message part. This is another page in your workbook. What words describe my business? So remember, we're doing all of this research so that we can develop a cohesive campaign for social media. So you're not just posting random thoughts, pictures, all of this effort is to have that campaign to really help achieve your business goals. So you wanna think about what words describe your business. Pull out buzzwords that command attention. Here are just some examples that might uh, work well with your business. Innovative, convenient, experienced, quality, service-oriented, eco-conscious, personable. A lot of times, um, you know, let's say with a, a local store compared to a corporate chain that sells the exact same thing, um, you're going to be, it's, you, could, you want that shop local, local knowledge, like that would be a really big buzzword to describe your business. That really separates you. And then how do other people describe your business? That's a, that's a line on your workbook that you can fill out. <laughs> and what does my persona respond to? 
you want to think about what kind of language your persona uses. Which keywords that you pulled out align best with your persona, with that audience that you created? Are they real businessy? Do they say, um, you know, business speak all the time? Or are they really casual? Are they the kind of, um, you know, NAU kid that's going to a bike store? Um, just kind of like what kind of language do they use? And what of your keywords would work best with them? What do they search to find you or your competition? What do you think are the words they're putting into Google to find you? Remember to cater your message to where your persona is in their buyer's journey. Are they just learning about you or are they already on board? What will your audience take away after seeing content from this campaign? All content produced for this campaign should reflect this message. So this isn't just one post that we're making based on all this work. This is a full series, um, a full campaign. So everything we make is going to have all of these goals in mind. And at the very end of the presentation, I'm going to walk you through um, an actual one that I did for a client. All right, we've got a poll question. Do you think your brand currently has a personality? Yes, no, I don't think so, kinda, definitely not, I'm not sure. <laughs> About 10 more seconds to answer the poll and then we're closing it. Okay, great. Yes and kinda are our winners. So that's great. You guys are definitely on the right track. Okay, now we're getting into the content. Uh, we'll spend a lot of time on this, and Mary, I'll ask you um, to chime in too. Uh, Mary's awesome at content. So we've got another question right away to talk about your content. Do you currently have a content calendar or do you wing it? Of course, yes, monthly calendar content. What's a content calendar? Fly like a bird, baby. I don't have social media. <laughs> Getting some good, good variety and responses for this one. Well, mostly. All right. Fly like a bird, baby. Okay, that's awesome. And that's 47% and 40%. Yes, you do have a content calendar. That's super impressive. Great. Is it me? Do I make it? <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so what types of content can I produce? We just want to choose one for now different types of content. Does your content present solutions to problems? Is it tips and tricks? Is it educational? Are you trying to educate your audience with your content? Are you looking to start dialogue in the community? Are they funny? Or is it for entertainment and humor? Do you showcase your knowledge and expertise? Are you putting yourself out there as an expert? Does it inform the public of your brand values? Um, or does it highlight shared experiences? I'll just add on to this. Obviously the objectives can change over time. So 
when we were talking about our persona, that's where this comes in as well. You know, where is your customer, your client in their journey? Are they just learning about your product or service? Because at that point, you want to be raising awareness, creating trust in them, giving them examples of how this is something that can help them. And then from there, you can shift to other objectives. So it may change, it probably will change over time as your customers become more aware of who you are and how you're solving a specific need for them. Yes, exactly. No one wants to see the same sale graphic over and over again. This is so true. If you capture their attention with content that they enjoy interacting with, they are more likely to engage with your promotions. I have found this to be so true also. So video is the number one form of media used in content strategy, overtaking blogs in infographics. I feel like right now blogs, um, blogs do really well for us at Mojo and it's great to get people to your website um, and increase your presence on Google. Um, but in terms of people actually consuming content, right now it is all video on all platforms. Promotional videos and brand storytelling are the most common video types created by marketers. And I think videoing also just much more humanizes everything. Um, you know, when you're only posting and they don't actually hear you and see you, it, it's hard to kind of cross over into that area of trust. So it's a great opportunity to use video to you know, humanize this technology world, this digital marketing world that we live in. Yep, I think it's so true. Video, whether it's a 15 second Insta story, um, or if it's a three minute promotional video, either one. Um, I know Rand talked about uh, our Remax team that we worked with in the first webinar, and they did a video where they just took um, videos of themselves on their phone, and then we and they talked about how they're handling um, the real estate market during coronavirus, and then we took all that content and put it all together and made a video for it, and it turned out so good, and everyone just used their phones, like there was nothing fancy about it, um, and we actually weren't even able to put money behind it on Facebook because of all of Facebook's crazy rules um but just organically it did incredible because people just loved seeing their faces they loved hearing their voices also this might be a great time mary to talk about the um the other stats that we we have um, from the person that couldn't come today but had those questions um sure we did have someone who can't make it submit some questions in advance for us to talk about uh one was uh how will the marketing realm change from this worldwide pandemic and in fact we have found that social media specifically facebook and instagram is up 40 percent uh countrywide by people by consumers. And so to answer that question, it's definitely an opportunity for businesses to market to people. So if you think about it, everyone's working from home. <laughs> everyone's on their computer. They're on their phone so much more because they're not in the office. So it's a great opportunity to use Facebook, Instagram. And even if you're not, you know, paying for ads, it's great organic advertising for your business. So we are seeing a great increase in digital marketing because of people's either they're out of work or they're working from home. Yeah. Um, Norman, I just saw your comment um, and that made me laugh. I, you know, I think definitely the key to all those um, videos that we put together was Austin's amazing video editing skills and what he turned it into. Um, and then when we had that final product, we were able to put in closed captioning and all that stuff to make it a little bit more ADA compliant. Um, but I totally get what you're saying <laughs> with that.
So here's a tip about your content. Be realistic with what you and your team can create. I think this is the number one most important thing. If you take away anything from this uh, 90 minute class that you take away this, you take away um, exactly what you can realistically create. I just had a meeting with a client and they were like, we wanna be on all platforms. And I was like, okay, great. But really, what can you do? What can you commit to every single day keeping up with? Not just the posting, the comment, uh, the content, but then also keeping up with the engagement afterwards. It is really, it's a full-time job to do that for one client, uh, let alone run your business and do that. So it, it you really, really, it's much, much better to just be on two platforms that you consistently, realistically contribute to daily than it is to be on six of them, um, but not be able to, to get after. So the other things you want to think about are what kind of content does my audience expect? Um, customer testimonials, blogs, like um, do you make DIY blogs and they like to read about new things to create? Um, behind the scenes, maybe they love behind the scenes. I know our highest posts on Mojo are always of us as individuals and things that we're doing behind the scenes. Um, how to. Again, like how to make a, your own disinfecting wipes, how to install a bidet. Those have been really popular lately. Is it your company history? Uh, we have a client in Bozeman, Montana, and I did some research um, thanks to a museum they have there about their downtown location and all the different things that were in that building before they were, and it was fascinating. Um, and that was just kind of curated content that I found from a local museum, and that did really well. WIP is work in progress. Um, also, people love to see where you came from. My background is actually in calligraphy, and if I had posted the very first thing that I had ever tried to write, I mean, it was the most terrible thing you've ever seen, to where I got to. Um, seven years later, you know, that's, it just, people love works in progress. They love to see your journey. Um, and does your, does your audience expect charity support? Okay, what types of content can I curate? So a big thing about, actually about 60% of the stuff that you wanna produce is curating content. This is what makes it really manageable to do a content calendar and put, to put stuff out on a regular basis. You really wanna think about 60% being um, content that other people have already shared that you can then reshare that's really relevant to your business. So this is what you wanna think about on what types of content can I curate. Um, what does your audience find interesting? Events or workshops, industry trends, that's a really big one. Uh, like we discovered um, on April 1st that 40% of uh, Facebook and Instagram um, people online on those platform have, platforms have gone up 40% since coronavirus had started. So that was fascinating about the industry that we're in and we really wanted to make sure that our clients were super active on those two platforms specifically. Um, industry innovations, new tech, something new out there that your audience would be interested in, relevant news and updates. Um, that could be just local news. Memes, people love memes, throw a little educational humor in there. Statistics, like that 40% that posted really well. Recipes or instructions. Uh, this is great for so many different types of clients. You might think, well, I'm not in the food industry, um, but you'd be really surprised how many different types of industries can use recipes. And then the history of your industry. So we talked about two different things, the content that you create and then the content that you curate. So I really want you to put a lot of thought into that content that you create because that's how you'll realistically uh, produce content on a regular basis. You'll be able to post how many times you want. Let's say you can't commit to daily, but you can commit to three days a week. Two of those posts could be content that you've created. No, 
curated and one of those posts can be content that you created. So then you're really only committing to one post that you created a week and the others are going to be you curated it. So this is about creating your content. Being consistent is tough, so you want to utilize your research resources. There's a lot of free stuff out there that you can use to help you create good, fast, high quality content. Um, Canva and Adobe Spark, both of these things have paid platforms, but some parts of Canva is free. I personally use Adobe Spark for my click ones. Um, I really enjoy it. This free photos, this Pexels, this is what I talked about before. Um, they have free photos that you can use in a ton, ton, ton of them. And they're super high quality. Unlike Adobe stock, which is like $35 a month and you only get 10 photos, I think a month. Um, just casual content. Uh, borrow designs. Uh, you might like when you were doing your research of other people, um, you might borrow some ideas to create that you liked that they made. And then if you have the resources, hiring a photographer, maybe an intern, um, a local agency, maybe Mountain Mojo Group, for example, um, those are really good things just to take it off your plate. So this is just another tip about your content. Do your research. Keep your ideal persona in mind. You want to be authentic and real. That is so important. Stay on brand. Everything that you create should be on brand. It should have the same colors. It should have the same photo filter. Stay on brand have that same brand personality. When you're talking to that user persona, keep it the same. I'm not gonna use the same tone of voice when I'm talking to, for example, the mall's clients as I am to home coast clients. Those are different. Keep your images clear and without heavy text. This is especially important. Well, actually it's important for Facebook and Instagram. Um, Facebook, especially if you then decide to put some money behind that thing that you created, you can't have too much text on your image or they'll reject you. Um, in Instagram, people are just used to beautiful images, not text. Utilize videos. This is really important now in 2020 more than ever. And then you always want to include a call to action. And that can be something as simple as, um, let's, I'll go back to like Mary, for example, posting a recipe of a delicious smoothie. She might say something at the end of her post that says something like, what's your favorite smoothie ingredient? Or have you ever heard of hemp seeds? I, I love putting them in my smoothie. Have you ever put um, hemp seeds in your smoothie? Different things like that. Yeah, just to add that that's what, creates engagement is you want your readers to, you know, if, if engagement is your goal and that is often for me, for my personal social media, I'll say something at the end to start dialogue with my followers. Um, so that's a great way of doing that. Another would be if you're trying to sell something like, Hey, you know, click the link in our bio for a, you know, a cookbook preview or something like that if you're selling a cookbook. So really you want to end your post with whatever your goal is, like engagement or selling a product, getting people, getting their attention, starting the discussion. Yeah, it's kind of like our poll questions in here. It's so much talking. It's hard to listen to just one person's voice for so long. So like I, by strategy, I put tried to put in poll questions often enough, A, so you just wouldn't have to hear my voice for a minute, um, but then also to keep you engaged with the presentation. And you wanna have that same sort of strategy with your content. So here's just some tips. Don't post things just because you like it. You really wanna keep that audience in mind. You and your audience might be a little bit different. Don't ignore social trends. Like, well, don't be like, well, I hate speaking on camera, so I'm not gonna do video. I'm sticking with my pictures, dang it. Um, you might kind of wanna get through that 
that barrier and try video, especially like live has been so popular right now since so many people are at home. Everyone is going live doing everything and it's terrifying at first, um, but, but you'll get better at it every single time that you do it. You also don't want to sell just to sell. This is so important. Um, I recently put together a big brand or a big social media strategy guide for a client. Um, and I really focused on not just selling to sell, how it's so much more important to really communicate with your audience and create that engagement. And then kind of by default, they learn who you are, who your product is, and they'll be interested in it because they want to support you instead of just shoving things in their face by this, by this. Okay, that was the section on content. Again, that's a couple of pages in your workbook that you can work on later. And I have some examples of content that I've done both curated and content that I've made for a client. Um, in just a little bit, we actually don't have a ton more, more slides to get to. Okay, so now we're gonna get into placements. What platforms am I supposed to use? So a brief overview of placements. I think this one is so funny. So we've got our donuts. Social sites explained with donuts. I miss donuts, by the way. <laughs> so Facebook would say, I like donuts. Here's my opinion. Take it. Twitter would say, I'm eating a hashtag donut. YouTube, here's a video of me eating a donut. Pinterest, here's a good donut recipe. And these days it might be using an air fryer. Um, Spotify, currently listening to Jay Dilla's donuts. Yelp, you'll like the donuts at this place. Reddit, ask me anything about donuts. <laughs> Snapchat, everyone but me is at this donut festival. Hashtag FOMO. That's fear of missing out, just in case. Uh, Tumblr, I like to blog about donuts. Quora, where did donuts get invented? Google Plus, Google employee who eats donuts. <laughs> Foursquare, this is where I like to eat donuts. LinkedIn, my skills include donut eating. And then finally, Instagram, here's a photo of my donut. Um, and so much has changed. This was probably just put out last year, but really so much has changed specifically with Instagram and Facebook. With both of these things now, you're going to do a video, you're going to do it on a story. So stories are the quick little 24 hour things on top of both Facebook and Instagram. And when first Instagram was just doing it, I thought it took off right away. I kind of stopped posting on Instagram. I was just using stories and I just didn't know if it would get that way on Facebook as much, but I really think that it has. I think stories are just as important on Facebook and Instagram. And here's a little bit of stats about those placements. So Facebook and Instagram are typically the two that I focus on the most for my clients. I've found that at least with the clients I've had so far that, that those are gonna be the placements that work best for them. Also LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, as far as YouTube goes, what I've done for clients so far is our, I have videos on YouTube, but they're linked, um, they're embedded in a blog. So, but YouTube, because video is just so big, um, here's just some numbers. Facebook, the winner, monthly active users, 2.23 billion. And the gender is pretty, pretty balanced on Facebook. And in all my study of advertisements that I've done, I have really found that to be true also. Uh, the majority of my ads, whether it's about tools or whether it's about gardening or whether it's about shopping, um, really, really balanced male and female. Frequency with Facebook, one to three posts a day. That 
that is really, really hard to be realistic with that unless you've hired an agency to post every single day for you. Um, that can be super tough, even if you're curating 90% of your content. You know, I think I'll talk a little bit more about curating content while you guys are looking at the screen. Um, one way that I do that is on Facebook, you can choose to share the post. So you can just click share and then you wanna share it to the page you manage. And you should always write something above the post that you're sharing um, that will directly relate to your audience. So for example, um, Traeger Grills did a really funny uh, April Fool's Day post and it was about uh, like grinding up your own pellets and and so I shared that and I, I wrote that um, well even though you can't you know grind your own pellets at home we, we are having buy four pellets get one free or something like that um, so it's just a little bit about my client plus it was I was curating that content so Traeger saw it Traeger liked the post that really helped with the engagement um, and I didn't have to create that content directly so it didn't take but a couple of minutes. Twitter these days, I think Twitter um, Twitter might even have more than this. I feel like Twitter is used a lot um, for news and updates. For example, uh, with the Flagstaff Mall right now, they have had so many updates. That's been great to have Twitter, just these really quick blasts out. Um, and with Twitter, you, will, you can post the same content often. You don't have to worry about, like Instagram, I would never post the exact same picture again, but Twitter, you can. So which platforms are you going to prioritize? Don't, I mentioned this before, spread yourself across too many social platforms. If you don't have the resources to keep up with all those platforms, your efforts will be ineffective. Do pick two you can do consistently and well. Okay, now we're getting into how you measure all this. Hey Mary, they just started blowing stuff outside of my house. Is it really loud? Can you hear it? They're doing like lawn work. No, I think you're okay. Okay, thanks. Fine. Okay, we've got another poll question. Have you paid attention to your social metrics before to adjust your content? No way, numbers give me tired head. Yes, the more data, the better. No, but just because I don't understand them, I'm not sure, I don't have social media. <laughs> Wow, totally tied. Yes, you do pay attention and no, but just because you don't understand them. Okay, great. Let's get into, oh. here's just a quote that I found. High performance marketing is rooted in strong data, but not all data is equal. Having quality data is critical to maximizing your marketing effectiveness, making every customer and prospect prospective interaction count. Why social media metrics are important. You want to measure how successful your campaign is. You want to measure how well your social strategy is performing. Measure if it will have an impact on your overall business. Again, going back to that main business goal. You don't know the impact of your social media presence until you have the data to back it up. Especially for like an agency like us, I can put posts out all day, but I don't just go tell the client, hey, I made all these posts. 
what I show them is not the post, it's the numbers. How am I, the content that I'm creating, how is that helping them reach their business goals? So your social media goals determine your metrics. Another reason we started with that. For every goal, you need a related metric, which will help determine if your social strategy is hitting the mark. What metrics do I want to improve? Choose one metric specific to the platform and one metric specific to your business goals. For example, my business goal, increase local awareness of my brand. My social goal related to that, this exact same thing we did at the beginning, increased post engagement with my local audience. So again, how many people are engaging on my post? So here is just some definitions and terms for Facebook analytics. I'm gonna go kind of slow through this. Um, so you, can you might wanna screenshot this, this slide. When you're, whether it's a paid ad or even an organic ad, you're gonna get a lot of these metrics. So impressions, total number of times any content from your page was seen in a newsfeed, ticker, or by visits to your page. You'll notice sometimes when you're on Facebook, you know, you open it up and there's a post. Close Facebook, open it back again, there's the same post. Every single time, that's getting recorded. Post engagements, total number of comments, shares, or reactions to your posts. So this is every single thing that's happened on your post, that's what that number is going to be. Link clicks, total number of clicks on links with your content, excludes other clicks such as video, photo, or post expansion clicks. So just to explain that a little bit better, like I might link a blog from a website. Um, so if they clicked on that link to go to the blog, then that's what that would be. So organic likes, this just means that I didn't do an ad where the goal was page likes. This is because of the content that I just put out there organically, the number of new users who liked my page because of that. Unlikes the total number of users that unliked your page. The net likes total number of paid or organic likes minus the amount of unlikes. And then total fans, total number of users who liked your page from the last day or report period. I've got this for Instagram too. So do, once again, I'm just saying the same things over and over again. Remember your business goal when deciding your social goal, create posts that align with your social goal, and make sure you have a specific quantifiable goal that can be measured. I think the rule is you need to hear something seven times to really learn it. So hopefully I've said it six or seven. Don't have a disconnect in your post copy and your social media goal. If the goal is conversions, don't say follow our page to learn more because then you're telling people to like your page. So your metrics won't align with your content. You might think, oh, this, this actually did really badly. Well, it didn't. You just didn't align your post with your goal. Don't have super long timelines. Um, you don't want to not analyze your all your metrics for say six months. You wanna get in there, how's it doing? And then readjust. Okay, so here's kind of all of that. That is really the end. I'm just gonna go into some little things now um, about putting all your campaign stuff together. Will you talk for a second? I'm going to close my window because that lawn is really loud. Sure. Do you want me to keep going through the presentation? Sure. Okay. All right. 
So you have your workbook. So we want to give you an opportunity to fill out these sections. We're going to give you about five minutes to do this. What your objective is, what your audience is, what your message is, what your content is, what your placements are, and what your metrics are. Thank you. Are you good, Michelle? Yeah, thanks. Okay. So this is an example of a Owen House Ace Hardware in Bozeman, Montana. And this is the kind of thing that you guys should do also in your workbook, like Mary mentioned. So my objective was increased impression share for the local market. My audience is the Freddies. I'll show you the Freddies in just a second. My message, still focused on the human touch, putting the neighbor in your neighborhood, and our knowledgeable team is always available when you visit. My content, highlight local products and the people behind them, showcase not just the product, but the people tell their story. Even though Ace is a national brand, Owen House is a local store. They sell all the Ace products, but then also a ton of local products. And I really wanted to really want to highlight for this goal, um, local products and the people that make them. My placements are going to be Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Pinterest because with these local products um, in the local like the knowledgeable team, we do a lot of DIY blogs. And so that's our, our, knowledgeable, exp our knowledgeable team, our own house experts, and we, that's the content that we place on Pinterest. My metrics, platform analytics for Facebook and Instagram, I'm looking for reach and impressions of my local market. So those are the two definitions, reach and impressions when I'm analyzing my content later. If those are high, then I'll know that I'll achieve this goal. I'm not looking at link clicks, for example. Oops. Okay, here's the Freddies. The Freddies are Bozeman locals for the last 12 years. Frank and Fran have been married for seven years after meeting at a football tailgate. The Freddies are active in the community, being involved in sports and outdoor activities like fishing and biking. You can find the Freddies on most Saturdays and Sundays at the local farmer's market, playing at Burke Park, or on the Story Hills Trail biking as a family. They, their media preferences, YouTube, Netflix, Instagram, and the Broncos. Brand preferences, Target, Home Depot, Walmart, and Old Navy. Their ages, 37 and 35. Marketing manager and geologist, married for seven years, and they're really comfortable with technology. Most important factors, the Freddies are less brand loyal than other personas. They are motivated more by price, convenience of online ordering, and inventory of product. Digital marketing and online content is going to be a heavy way to reach the Freddies. For traditional marketing, community involvement through sponsorships and events like Sweet Pea, Slam Fest, Bozeman Film Festi Festival, and other local events is another way to reach the Freddies. So that was all stuff we did that, um, like Mary talked about when we do our market research. Obviously, we are not based in Bozeman. Those are not events that are familiar to us, um, but we did a lot of market research to see what is important to the Bozeman community and what events would be important to people like the Freddies. You really have to know your target audience inside and out in order to effectively market to them. So that's why these personas are so important. Like you have to know who your client is, who your customer is, what motivates them, what discourages them from making, you know, an online purchase or a service or using a local business as opposed to a big box store. So that's why this exercise is so crucial, crucial to your digital marketing. So with those personas in mind, with the Freddies in mind, here's two examples um, of content that I made for them. 
So this one on the left, meet Tiffany, the Owen House store manager at the downtown location. Not only has she worked at Owen House for over 10 years, she also started her own business. She realized she could solve the problem of too many scattered plastic bags around the house with a bag bin. Tiffany makes these bags right here in Bozeman. They have a fabric loop for hanging and elastic on top and bottom. There are loads of styles and colors to choose from. Come say hi to Tiffany and check out her bags. And these are super popular. People know Tiffany. They love Tiffany. They like to support not only Owen House, but her bags. She solved a problem. I mean, it's just such a great thing. And amazingly, there are a lot more products like this that Owen House sells. And then the one on the right is a curated one um, that I got from the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. So I just started a hashtag Bozeman updates in case you missed it. Our number one goal. And then I just took a quote directly from the article. I mean, it probably took me 30 seconds. So when you only have X amount of hours per month devoted to making a ton, a ton of content, that's when you really want to think about that ratio of 60% um, should be curated. And so I really, that, that's all you have to do. I put this own thing, a little bit of ours, a quote, and then there's the article that I thought somebody like the Freddies would like. I think this is a great example for people, the difference between created and curated. Um, Cause I don't, I don't know if everyone always knows what that means. Obviously creating is you're creating the content yourself a hundred percent, which is for example, Tiffany. And then curated is you're citing another source. Yep, exactly. Thank you for saying that again. Okay, questions. Uh, one of the questions that we got in the, when people registered for the class was about the timing of posts. And I have, I'll come back to these in just a second, but I put some extra slides on here at the end so you guys could really see that about the timing of posts. So this is for Facebook global engagement. And again, we kind of talked about when you're researching your competitors, you want to see what's working for them. What time are they posting? Are people engaged on those posts? Do when they post, do some, you know, if it's 10 a.m. versus 5 p.m. Um, or what's working better for them? Is it the same kind of product that you have? Do you think that those times would work well for you? So this is just all content globally um, for Facebook. The darker colors are the highest engagement. So you can see the middle of the week is definitely when people are more engaged. I don't know if you have found that for yourself also. That's definitely when I'm more on. Not on on the weekends at all, um, but definitely during the week. And then the times are right in that middle of the day. I always feel like lunch break is a really good time. People step away from their computer and they think that they should decompress by looking at social media on their phone. Um, so those mid like 10 to two um, seems to do really well with Facebook. And you can check this information yourself. This is why it's really important to have a business account on Facebook and also on Instagram. You can go into your, uh, your metrics, your analytics, and see when you're getting the most likes, when your followers are the most active. You can see the data about which posts you have do the best as far as like reach. Um, you know, likes, comments, things like that. Like there's so much information in there. And as Michelle said, there's no just here's the time you should post 9 a.m. everyone boilerplate because it really, as she has said, depends on your industry, um, your consumers, your customers, your clients, like when are they active? So you definitely want to go in and look at that information and then plan the timing of your posts according to that date, time, you know, and also seeing what content does well, um, what, you know, gets the most likes, the most comments, the shares, all of that. Yeah, that is such a good point. It, it really depends on your industry so much. Oh, I was like, I thought I did Instagram. Okay, there it is. And here's the Instagram one. A little bit more into the evening for Instagram. For me, this just seems like 
more people are on more consistently on Instagram than they are Facebook. Um, you know, real heavy usage during that middle of the week and very light usage Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But on Instagram, really only Sunday is taking a hit. The rest of it is really, really consistent um, engagement. And if you're a global brand, like say you have a YouTube channel and you do educational content and so you people all over the world look at your content, you know, if you posted at 2 a.m. and you were a local brand, I would say you were totally crazy. Why did you do that? But if you're an international YouTube person, you can post at 2 a.m. A lot of your people that watch, they might be on a totally different time zone. So it's important just to think, like Mary said, about your industry, who your audience is, and when you expect them to be on. Hey, Michelle, someone's asking if we can go back to the slide before the Facebook graph. Yeah. Maybe. This one, global engagement graph, I think so. Yes, thank you, okay, perfect. Thanks, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so yeah, let's talk about this a little bit. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Average time spent, I think, is really good to look at also. I need to put TikTok on here. I know I can kill 90 minutes in the blink of an eye on TikTok. Facebook average time spent 35 minutes, 2 billion active monthly users. Again though, even with Facebook, even with those incredible stats, you really wanna think about your audience. If your audience is 25 and under, it's not gonna be on Facebook. There are 60 million active business pages on Facebook. That's amazing. LinkedIn, uh, we have a, a business coach that has been on LinkedIn since almost LinkedIn started. He is so active on LinkedIn. He gets so much of his business from LinkedIn. It is his main platform. That's where his audience is. That's where he gets the most engagement. It's not gonna be as beneficial for him to um, post that same content on Facebook. I was just looking at the Twitter stats and that made me think about how this is kind of an all long-term game. Even though you wanna analyze your content as often as possible to change and adjust on the fly as you go, um, you really wanna think long-term about this. You're not gonna start a YouTube channel and then have 2 million viewers right away. My favorite YouTube yoga girl has almost 6 million, um, but she, she was one of the very first yoga people on YouTube. And then there's a couple more on the next page. Whoa, I did not know they, okay. <laughs> they uploaded individually like that, that's awesome. Okay, <laughs> Instagram. 95 million photos are uploaded each day. And to be honest, I wonder if that was, if that stat includes stories or just timeline feed photos. Because with stories, I would think that number doubles. Average time spent, this is the lowest at 15 minutes. But as we saw from the other slide, the global engagement slide, uh, maybe shorter time at once, but more often. Did you know when Instagram introduced videos, there were 5 million that were shared in 24 hours? That's amazing. 
The best time to pin, this is a great thing, 8 to 11 p.m. on Saturdays. I bet most people do like their menu planning and all that stuff on Sundays, um, so all that content is there for them. And then Snapchat. I, I'm not in this Snapchat age bracket, but I think Snapchat is starting to be not quite as effective and TikTok is definitely a little bit more where it's at. TikTok just encompasses all age ranges, I think. Does anybody have any questions that we can answer? I just have one final poll question. Was this beneficial? Did you learn something new today? Yes, I had a good background of social media, but still learned new things. Yes, but most of it was still over my head. I put this in because in my in-person classes, I've had people that have never even logged on to Facebook before. Um, no, I already knew everything in this presentation. I'm hungry. This one is probably specifically for me. <laughs> Yes, somebody else is hungry. <laughs> yes, I had a book at, good background in social media, but still learn new things. That's great. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, like I mentioned before, the best thing that you can do for your social media campaign is to step away from the computer, take your workbook, go to a quiet space, set a timer for one hour, no interruptions, and just really, really dig deep and wait, work your way through that workbook. Um, everything will benefit so much from you doing that. Don't take any distractions. I think really setting a timer always helps me. I know it's not going to be infinitely long. I'm spending the whole day on this. I'm spending one hour, I'm really going to think about this and how it will help my business. Do you have anything to add, Mary? No, I think you pretty much covered it. I guess if we want to move on to any final questions, we can do that. While everyone's thinking about whether they have any questions, we did have one more submitted by someone who couldn't make it today. Uh, we've covered two out of the three questions. I just wanted to make sure we hit it. So you know, do we think that there's an opportunity to increase social community and environmental responsibility and marketing practices? If so, how? What do you think, Michelle? Can you repeat the question more slowly? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> do we think there's an opportunity to increase social community and environmental responsibility in marketing practices? If so, how? Yes, I do. I remember when I first, and maybe you did this too, Mary, uh, when I applied for Mojo, the first question they ask you before you submit your resume is, um, do you think marketing has an impact on the world? And and I just thought, yes, it, it already does. It is, it is everything. It is how we view everything. I have a friend who only, who does mostly video production, and she will only work with vegan sustainable brands. So that's something that that's her niche that she's chosen to focus on. And because of that, the people that view her as an expert and the companies that work with her know that that's her background and that's her ethics and morals and what she wants to always put out there as a business owner and support those clients that she works with. So I think just always having those, make those little decisions um, for yourself. That's again, that's gonna affect your user persona and who that is. You can, you can narrow down your focus that much. Mm -hmm. I agree, absolutely. And I also think, well, hopefully <laughs> coming out of coronavirus, everyone will be more, socially and environmentally aware and awake. So I hope that everyone will be more receptive to that kind of messaging going forward and really be looking forward to getting back to community. Um, obviously it's gonna be a process, but I think obviously marketing is the way to deliver these messages to the world. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I hope so also. You know what, Mike, I, I agree with that. Um, I love that comment um, about the Flagstaff community supporting each other by on social media, liking each other's posts, um, retweeting each other's posts. I, I think that's great. 
just supporting everyone, really refostering what it means to be a community on the other side of this. Yep. If I can, uh, if I can cut in on that, um, I Mike, that is actually exactly what uh, CCC Community Education is trying to do. I've been trying to put together online learning opportunities, and I'm thinking, how can we engage with our local businesses? And so I've been talking to a few different local places to see if we can put together little boxes of you know, crafts and things like that that people can buy and get at their houses and still do something online um, that's a bit more engaging. So um, if anybody is on this call who's interested in doing that, you are more than welcome to reach out to me because um, that's our biggest thing is supporting our community that's in the name. So yeah, I had to, I had to give myself a little, little Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Well, I think that probably wraps it up for us. Thanks to everyone so much for being here and participating in the poll questions. Um, it was great to get your answers and that definitely helps us going forward in our next webinar, just knowing what your answers were and who our audience is. Thanks to Mary and Megan and Kay um, for supporting Mojo and supporting me on this webinar also. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks so much. Um, we've recorded all of these. So if anybody wasn't able to join us for one, we'll be sending them out hopefully next week. Um, have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Um, hopefully stay inside uh, and don't get caught in the crush of traffic from everybody <laughs> driving up from the valley. Um, best wishes and we're signing off. Have a great day. Bye.